Good morning. You're just in time. Welcome to the St. Gabriel Cafe, your sacred space to sip on today's local blend of faithful encouragement. Let's start our day together. Good morning. Come on in. Pull up a chair. I'm Dave Orsborn. And I'm Amanda Miller. Friends, we welcome you into the St. Gabriel Cafe, our live and local morning show. This morning, we'll be talking about sharing the reason for our hope through our personal testimonies. Joining us are our friends, Emily Knuth, Recruiting Director and Great Lakes Camp Director for Damascus, and Kara Day, Youth Minister at St. Brendan the Navigator Parish in Hilliard. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Cam. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Good morning. Pray. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good and gracious Father, we praise you and we thank you for today, for your goodness and for your blessings. Lord, you have given each of us a story and you have called us to yourself. Lord, help us to just be in awe of the ways in which you work in our lives, to be humbled and to be grateful and to take all that, despite maybe some of its ugliness or smears or unfortunate parts, Lord, that that through all that we may see our glory and share it, to share it well, to share it in prudence and wisdom. Lord, we, we thank you for our individual stories the gifts and the ways that you have worked in our lives. We are grateful. Lord, we just ask that you continue to do that work of daily conversion in our hearts, that we would grow in greater love for you day by day, and in turn to love our neighbor well. Lord, we, we pray all this in Jesus' name and asking for the intercession of our Mama Mary. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. You brought a big mushroom with you today. (laughs) I did. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So I brought, I bought a grow kit a while ago just because lion's mane is supposed to be very good for brain fog and uh, mental health and whatnot. And so an Alaskan mushroom. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually got it when I was in Alaska. And so I've been just, you know, trying my best to figure it out and it's fruited for the second time. So I feel pretty good about that. So I brought some in for show and tell. (laughs) Actually, I brought some in partly because I'm going to use the dehydrator. (laughs) Which I'm not sure where it is now. Me neither, but I'll figure that out later. (laughs) (laughs) It got moved. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and then what are you going to do with it? A tea or? Yeah. So, um. If you've ever heard of those uh, coffees that are getting into like the mushroom coffee because it has the benefits and whatnot. Obviously, we've been talking about it. You make fun of me all the time for it, but I'm just updating our friends. We make fun with you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, And so I've decided, you know, instead of buying an expensive coffee that I don't actually really like as well, um, and I'm more of a tea drinker. I'm just going to make my own. So I've, I've turned it into, into a powder and I add it to my tea sometimes. And it's just nice. I, I actually do, um, I, I think it helps. So I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. Is the flavor pretty subtle? It, once it's mixed into the tea, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, we'll see. Once it's mixed in, like, have you had it? Not mixed in. Uh, yes. The, okay. Okay. Once it was dehydrated, I'm just like, oh, it kind of looks like a chip. Maybe I'll just try it. Not a good idea. It's like very concentrated mushroom taste. And I don't even really like mushrooms that much. <laughs> a little salt, a little ketchup. Uh, right. Maybe. Actually, yeah. I did make jerky out of um, oyster mushrooms and that turned out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just trying things out. Dave, are you back on coffee or tea this morning or i'm on tea yep yep why do you say that like you're sad about it dave tea's great it is you can be sad about it yeah i'm a bit sad about (laughs) it (laughs) (laughs) my order of my chinese smoky cabin tea is on the way from a giant retailer based in seattle nice so yeah okay but it hasn't arrived yet so i'm on a english breakfast it comes from um, Seattle? From a, a large e-company. Well, let's just say Amazon. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By way of China. 
Got it. So got it. I, th- I hope it's made in China. I would assume a lot of things are. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't think you've tasted this. No. Yeah. It, I think I've smelled it. Does it taste like it smells? Kind of. Like It's like, like a, a smoky cabin. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a Russian variety called Russian Caravan. Oh. And this is the Chinese variety of that. It's a, a very dark um, black tea with some other stuff in it to give it that smoky cabin flavor. <laughs> what does the caravan one taste like? A smoky cabin. Oh, also, but yeah, just... but a Russian smoky cabin. Right, as opposed Got it. to a Chinese smoky cabin. <laughs> Got yeah. it. You should know the difference. I should. Uh, my apologies. It's Mia a, culpa. It's a bold, a bold tea. <laughs> I, okay, can we have a taste test at some point? Oh, absolutely. Now that I'm learning there's two different smoky cabins, mm. I should obviously know the difference. Yeah. There's a, there's a shop locally that um, sells both varieties and that, that's when i first discovered it okay so. so where do you get it from well this this batch is i buy it in bulk now okay so from amazon mm-hmm. got it <laughs> what's up cam nothing nothing <laughs> got nothing got nothing well you have been working on cold brew well yeah i didn't have any this morning but my I, i'm trying to figure out the ratio of how to perfect cold brew because you don't like just straight up make cold brew you make cold brew concentrate and then you add water to that to make cold brew but figuring out the amount of water to add has been a little frustrating sure still a process yeah okay i'm enjoying it it's like it's a good kind of frustrating because it's like it's the creative process trying to figure things out right okay right well we look forward to but i just have keurig coffee this morning okay regular old keurig coffee but the cold now the cold brew will be your own special blend found nowhere else in the world. Yeah. You could in my fridge mm-hmm. only. You could say that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a look at today's gospel? Mm-hmm. Thursday, September 26th, the 25th week in ordinary time. Today we celebrate Saints Cosmas and Damian. Martyrs. We're looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 7 to 9. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed, because some were saying, John has been risen from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded, who then Is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. Amen. Amen. Herod's freaking out a little bit this morning, huh? I I think so. Yeah. A little worried that John might be coming after him. Mm Mm-hmm. But he's asking good good questions. Um, Who then is this about whom I hear such things? So maybe his motivation was more out of um, fear or just simple curiosity. But still, you know, he's he's asking who the, who who the Lord is, and um, kind of fits nicely with our conversation that we're going to be having yeah. this morning. Mm-hmm. So, you know, who's he asking these questions to, and who will? Give him the answers. Mm-hmm. You know, give their testimonies about uh, who this Lord is. Yeah, had a similar reflection this morning, in particular with that last part there. And he kept trying to see him. And Dave, I think you're right. Even though maybe his his reasonings were not spot on, maybe it was out of fear, or curiosity. Um, the Lord works with us where we're at. You know. Um, even if we're unsure or maybe because of just experiences in our lives, we have um, some uncertainty of approaching the Lord um, to just even ask the question and and to try to seek our Lord out. I think the Lord is happy to meet us there. Mm. And and if along the way, um, he'll bring us into that that greater desire and that greater love. And so we should we should not be afraid to come to him wherever we're at. Absolutely. I'm just thinking about how, what it says about 
Jesus too, that Herod is like, well, John, I beheaded. So who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And um, I think what it says to me is uh, that there was something about Jesus that was really attractive, Mm -hmm. right? Um, that, that really attracted people to want to know more about him, whether it was out of fear or out of curiosity or out of, uh, you know, desperation for healing or whatever it might be. Um, I'm just thinking about how like the, the Lord himself is, is attractive and, and attracts us, I think today too. Um, you can look at the world and see how everybody makes idols out of things that are not God. But I think deep down in their heart, they're making those idols because they're looking for him. Um, They're just misplacing it, you know? Um, And so I think that's what really stands out to me today is, is, Lord, you are uh, attracting me today. You are drawing me to yourself today. Um, Help me to open my eyes to see that. Amen. 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 Joining us in just a couple minutes, Emily Knuth and Kara Day. We're going to be talking about giving our own personal testimonies to build the kingdom. Friends, thanks for being with us here in the cafe this morning. Stay with us. A prayer of thanksgiving for the St. Gabriel Catholic Radio, Proclaim the Truth, Fall Spirit Drive. Beloved Father, you tell us that you always go before us. We thank you for the gift of our faith and for choosing us to be a part of this radio station that extends to people and places beyond our ability to imagine. We give you all the glory for those who support this radio station. And for all our sustaining members and business supporters who give faithfully throughout the year. We give God thanks for the volunteers who gave us their time, talents, and treasures, especially to our new Eucharistic adorers. God, we thank you for the priest who joined us on air to support radio evangelization. We thank you, Lord, for the spark of renewal in our local community. Continue to do your work through our voices, hands, and feet. Amen. Amen. Do you have a minute for lasting happiness? Living virtuously is the way to freedom, happiness, and holiness. To grow in virtue, we must learn about it, practice it, and persevere in it. This is what the saints have achieved with excellence. An excellent example of the virtue of gratitude is seen in St. Josephine Bakita. She lived gratitude heroically by having a thankful disposition of mind and heart, despite a tragic childhood in which she was kidnapped by slave traders. She was eventually bought by a family who introduced her to the Catholic faith. She was then freed, baptized, and became a religious sister, living with great gratitude to God. Let us ask St. Josephine Bakita to pray for us, that we too may grow in gratitude. Educate yourself in virtue. Learn more at educationinvirtue.com. I'm Lori Kroc, and this is a Holy and Healthy Minute. A friend recently said to me that she doesn't enjoy exercise, but she enjoys walking. I laughed a little and said that I considered walking to be exercise, and so much more. Walking can be a time of silent introspection for prayer and reflection on the activities of our day. It can also be a time when we hear God speak to us. We may feel moved to pray and give thanks for our family, our health, and for the beauty of creation that surrounds us. Sacred Scripture gives us a beautiful story of Jesus walking to Emmaus with the two disciples. It wasn't until later, at the breaking of the bread, that the disciples realized that Jesus was moving their hearts while on the walk. From Luke 24, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the Scriptures to us? Let us pray. Jesus, may the simple act of walking, both physically and spiritually, bring us closer to you. Amen. Welcome back to the St. Gabriel Cafe. I'm Dave Orsborn. And I'm Amanda Miller. Joining us in the cafe are Emily Knuth, who is the 
recruiting director and Great Lakes camp director at Damascus, and Kara Day, the youth minister at St. Brendan's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Today, we wanted to talk a little bit about testimony and just the importance of it and how it's beneficial and how to share it, all the great things. And we know from 1 Peter 3, it says, always be prepared to make a defense at anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Um, and so I think that's a, just a great place to get started. Um, if anyone has any reflection on that um, and just, yeah, why is, why is testimony important? I think, I don't know, when I'm looking at that, I'm like, okay, so always be prepared. And uh, that was the part that kind of stuck out to me. And I think, you know, when we're talking about faith and talking about the Lord, we should be ready at any moment to to talk about him and who he is and how he's worked in our life. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think that really challenges me. Of like, am I always prepared at any moment if I'm in the grocery store or if I'm with my family or I'm with my roommates? Am I prepared to share something about the Lord, about who he is? Yeah, and I think the the second half there of, um, you know, always be prepared to give a reason for your hope. I think hope was what was sticking out to me because, you know, in our world, it is often so void of hope and a lot of people experience a lack of hope. So um, kind of to Emily's point, like am I um, not always, not only am I you know, prepared to give a reason for my hope, but am I living a life that shows that I, that I live in hope that would make someone even ask a question in the first place? You know, what is, what is it different? What is that hope that you carry? Do encounters that you have like in in the grocery store, um, it gets to how important it is to look different, Mm -hmm. you know, to act different, talk different, so people recognize that hmm, there, there's something going on there that is intriguing, that's attractive, um, and, and joy, right, is, mm-hmm. is, is probably the most basic way to do that. You, if, if you're living, living in Christ um, with the gifts of the Spirit, then um, you, you will have joy, yeah. right? Actually, um, Emily, just like you were sharing that even asking the question to yourself, am I prepared to give an account? And you were implying in a daily way uh, and not just in this grandioso, maybe you're asked to give your testimony, but in the day to day, am I ready to just let people know why I'm so hopeful or why I'm smiling that day or insert, you know yeah, I'm a Christian and God has changed my life in some way. So, so do you, is this something you actively do? Like ask yourself every once in a while? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I do. Well, do you? Okay. I, think, I think for a long time, I felt like um, I didn't have a testimony mm-hmm. in the sense of, you know, I think when people think of testimonies, you think of these like traumatic events that people had and they found Christ through that or this like, they had this total like, um, you know, St. Paul moment where they were totally anti-faith and then something happened and now they're on, on fire Catholic. And I didn't really feel like I had something like that in my life. Like I, I'm very fortunate. I had a, I've had a pretty normal, good life and I was raised a Catholic. And so I, I kind of felt like when I was speaking, I was like, well, I don't really have a good testimony. And the Lord was like, Emily, like the test, like your testimony is every day like the way that I speak to you and the things that Mm -hmm. we talk about and the things that you're doing, like that's your testimony. Mm -hmm. So it shifted my perspective of like, it doesn't have to be a traumatic, dramatic event, but like our testimony is the story of the everyday conversion that we're going through with the Lord. And that, that does happen every day. Mm -hmm. Does somebody else's uh, testimony stand out uh, to both of you when you heard somebody's testimony that was intriguing or attractive? I feel like um, the first time I was really introduced to the idea of testimony, I was a high schooler and I, you know, similarly had grown up Catholic and uh, at that point in my life was kind of nominally Catholic. And I heard um, some an older and upperclassman at my high school uh, 
get up at like a youth group kind of event and share how Jesus had impacted their life. And I remember, um, you know, I, at that point had really ever only heard, you know, priests or other people talk about Jesus in that kind of way. So, uh, to hear, you know, someone who was my age was like more relatable to where I was at in Mm -hmm. life. Um, that really impacted me and it started a a curiosity in me, um, that yeah, kind of like what Emily was saying was like, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, something big and dramatic. And, you know, if that is your story, God brings, you know, there's so much glory, um, to the Lord in the ways that he's brought people through very difficult things. Um, but there's also so much victory and just seeing a life that has been slowly transformed, um, and conformed to look more like Jesus over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think about, um, I went to a Steubenville conference as a eighth grader, like going into high school and I had never been to anything like that before. So I just thought it was the coolest thing you get to stay on a college campus in a dorm. And I was like, this is it. <laughs> um, and I, I couldn't even tell you who it was, but I just remember some of the speakers being up there and sharing about their lives. And I, and I had, yeah, similarly to Kara, I had never heard really people talk like that before and share so openly about their faith. Um, in that way, besides someone, yeah, who maybe was a priest or religious and, um, it, it was attractive, you know, stories mean something, you know, and I, I think of some of the best and the most impactful talks I've ever heard or things. It's the testimonies that I remember because it's personal. And I think it helps when I listen to, it, I'm like, wow, that could happen to me too. Mm-hmm. Emily Knuth and Kara Day here in the cafe with us this morning. Emily, give us your testimony. All right. <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to share the testimony about how I got here because I think that's been one of the most impactful in my life. So I'm from Rockford, Illinois and grew up Catholic, was just kind of doing the Catholic things, but I wouldn't say that I really knew Jesus and had a relationship with him. In college, I went to the University of Northern Iowa um, I was, I really wanted to go to a non-Catholic school because I'd gone to Catholic schools my whole life and I was in a rebellious phase. No more uniforms. I'm on out. <laughs> uh, well, it turns out that UNI is a very Christian campus and, um, I got really plugged into the Catholic Newman Center there and heard about uh, Damascus and really started to like form this personal relationship with God. And one night I was, um, in prayer, I was getting ready to graduate college and, you know, trying to ask myself that question that most college students do of, uh, what am I doing with my life? (laughs) Um, and, uh, was in adoration one night and just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I felt what most of us probably feel sometimes when we ask questions to God and that's uh, silence. (laughs) And so I'm like, no. And I asked again, I was like, God, what am I supposed to do? And I felt the tug to go look at the first reading, uh, from that day. And I had been discerning Damascus or another missionary organization. And so I felt the tug to go look at the first reading and it was in Acts 21. And it said word for word, get up and go into Damascus. And there you'll be told about everything appointed for you to do. And um, <laughs> it was like one of those moments where God slapped me in the face. And like, I'm like, okay, that's, that's pretty clear. Subtle. So yeah, yeah. No, he knew how I needed to be talked to. He was like, <laughs> so... Um, So, yeah, so I said yes, and the rest is history. So that was uh, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not really a testimony of how I got to know Jesus, but a testimony of how he's worked in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What would your testimony look like today, Kara? Today. Today. Um, Like of my life right now? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say that the Lord has been... um, just showing me a lot of his nearness and peace. I think, uh, the last uh, really couple years, um, there has been a lot of, um, more anxiety, worrying about things. Um, I kind of, uh, to Emily's point earlier, actually did have a pretty like big and traumatic event in my life. And that was the loss of my younger brother. And so the Lord, the way the Lord, has been so near to me in that and taught me his, his presence that is always with me. Um, I just feel like in the midst of, um, you know, learning to care for my family and things like that, um, 
God has uh, shown me what it is to abide in him and to have peace that, um, that remains no matter what is going on around me. And it's been beautiful. I feel like I've been able to see the victory that God's won in that area of my life. We're actually, um, we just started the the youth group year and sometimes the first few youth groups of the year being in charge of everything that goes on um, at the Vine, it can be overwhelming because there's a lot of things to do, a lot to set up and things to prepare for. And I um, was reflecting recently of, wow, these first few weeks, I have been so peaceful and nothing has been able to um, shake the peace that the Lord has brought in my life. And I was just reflecting like, wow, that, that was not true of me a few years ago before, um, you know, the Lord yet yeah, really broke through in my life in the area of a lot of, uh, anxiety and gave me his peace. I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know what saint says it, but there's a saint quote that says, uh, there is many paths to sainthood as there are people in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that each of us are uniquely called home to sainthood in that way. And, uh, something you had said, Emily, uh, about how, you know, it's not your testimony that you shared a moment ago was not really like a testimony of coming and getting to know Jesus, but that testimony of like the discernment and listening to his voice there. Um, and how even in our lives, there are like many testimonies, <laughs> um, throughout our lives to remind us in, in those different seasons or moments of our lives where we are called to turn to him. Um, and then also thinking about how like Dave, you asked the question a little bit ago, you know, those another person's testimony who's really stuck with you or struck you in a particular way. Um, and just like the beauty of how God reveals himself through people. Um, Kara, I'm sure you see this at the Vine with all of the mm -hmm. high schoolers, but not just them, but also the other like core team members. And Emily, I'm sure you've seen this through the years at Damascus, not just with the campers, but with all the other staff members too, of the ways God is like, uniquely reveals himself in, in each person's face that way. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. As we're talking about testimony, it's making me realize there are so many different snippets or aspects of testimony that I maybe wouldn't have originally thought about. You know, because I think sometimes when we hear the word testimony, it's this, like we've talked about this big aha or the St. Paul moment but, but also as I'm hearing, like, Kara, you just shared, well, what's he doing in my life today? Like in this season right here. And then Emily, you just shared, well, how did, how did he get me to this stage in life? And so there are so many different ways to give a testimony. And so I'm just kind of reflecting on, on that of there, and this would be helpful for our own lives of not only Lord, what have you been doing on the grand scheme of my whole life, but how are you working in the day to day? And how can I, one, reflect on that and be grateful of that, but two, be ready to give an account. And I think the reflecting helps us to be ready to give an account. Would you say the reflecting process is, is important? Oh, I think it's a necessary part. You know, I, I think so often in our lives, we don't take time to sit and reflect on, Lord, where were you today? What, what, did, you, what did you speak to me today? What, what did we do today? Um, that's something I think I need to get better at. You know, at the end of the night when I go to bed, I'm like, I'm out. My head hits the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I'm asleep. But actually, you know, taking that time to do an exam in my day, like, Lord, yeah, what did we do? How can I be better? But also, where were you working? Um, I think that totally goes into that daily testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, like you said, Amanda, kind of on the, you know, big scale, it's helpful to look back over the course of your life and be like, okay, the things that I believed about myself, the world, God, you know, how have those changed and shifted over the course of my life? And, you know, what were kind of some of the key uh, events or things that uh, caused those shifts, kind of the big picture. But then, yeah, also the day to day, you know, okay, in my own life, you know, oh, I used to really struggle you know, believing this lie about myself or about God. And now I don't, you know, what, what was the shift there? How has my, um, how have I been transformed by the Lord in that way? So I think, yeah, they're reflecting, um, both in the, the big picture of our lives, but then also in our, in our own, you know, just personal mindsets or habits or things we can, you know, each of those is a mini testimony of how God has conformed us to look more like him. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's one part too to, I think that's like the first part is like recognizing Lord, where were you? Where have you been? But then the second part of the testimony of like, are you, are, are we ready to share that? Mm-hmm. You know, I think people have, there's such a, there can be a fear, anxiety about sharing about the, the way the Lord's worked in our lives, especially if we're not surrounded by a community that, community that we feel like would receive that well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's, those are like the two pieces in my mind. Like, are you willing to reflect and ready for the Lord to speak? And are you willing to go and say something and do something with it if he gives you the opportunity to? Mm-hmm. And not every testimony he's going to want us to tell people, right? But... Mm-hmm. Is there an element of prudence then, are you saying, in terms of sharing testimony? I think so. I don't know. I think there are times in prayer with the Lord where I think he's like, hey, Emily, this is just for me and you. Like, let's just do, let's go into your heart here. Let's just, this is for me and you. And we'll go back to this. And then I think there's other things where he's like, hey, like, knock, knock. You need to go say something about this. Like, mm-hmm. this is for some someone else and something else too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are ways that you've been able to discern that? I think one thing that comes to mind is um, kind of evaluating, okay, am I still in the midst of Mm. healing from this? Um, Am I ready and able to talk about this without, um, you know, uh, breaking down, high emotion, things like that? Am I able to give, you know, adequate glory to God in that way where I am able to talk about what Jesus has done and not so much about the hard thing that has happened. Um, so that's something that uh, a tool I've used. And, you know, when I am teaching high schoolers to share their testimony, you know, evaluating like, okay, if if you haven't quite seen, if you're still in the midst of seeing God bring healing to this area of your life, your heart, your circumstances, um, we might not be quite ready to share it yet. Um, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a testimony in progress more so. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> I think because the Lord still has things to do there too. Like Mm -hmm. you don't, you don't go and read. If an author is writing a book, you don't go and ask him, Hey, can I have the first five chapters and only the first five chapters to read? Mm -hmm. Um, You ask him for the whole book. Right. And so if the God, if God is still authoring in your life, I think there's a, that's a really good point here that um, wait for the book to be, you know, finished that, or at least that chapter to be finished in that point, because uh, maybe the the glory that the Lord wants to bring to his name through that uh, is even bigger than where you would be right now to share it. And there's such a patience to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because some, <laughs> sometimes that testimony is like a 15 minute experience and sometimes it's like a five year experience. Mm-hmm. And so knowing, yeah, having the prudence to know when is, when is the right time. <clears throat> Emily Knuth and Kara Day here in the cafe with us. Has anyone helped you, given you insights in, in, into your into your own life about how the Lord is working to help you kind of realize that that part of your testimony? I'm, I'm thinking of spiritual friendships or community where somebody shares how um, how they see the Lord working with you that maybe hadn't occurred to you or gifts i'm thinking especially um as i was praying on this last night with uh youth ministry um helping young people and it really applies to any age helping others see gifts Mm -hmm. uh and you know that ways that the lord is working in their lives that Mm -hmm. they may not completely be aware of that they have but then how they can use it for the good of the church yeah, I, um, there's definitely times where over the course of just, you know, building friendship with high schoolers, you know, people are typically at least in high school for four years. And so if I, you know, get to the opportunity to know them for that length of time, it is really beautiful when I'm able to point out, you know, well, you know, you used to struggle with this, or we used to, you know, talk about you know, this lie that you believed or this way that you viewed God and his church. Mm. And now I'm hearing you say this kind of, you know, repeat back to them things that they've told you over the course of knowing them. And it, I can sometimes see, you know, the light bulb start to click like, oh, wow, God really has done something in my life. Because I think so many people do have that feeling of, I don't have a testimony. You know, I, 
nothing super big or crazy has happened, but being able to, you know, point out to them specific, uh, whether it's mindsets or um, identity things that you've seen people grow in. And I know that's been beneficial for me too. You know, I can think of my, I've had uh, the same women in small group with me for the past three years. And every week they're always, you know, helping me recall and remember um, well, that kind of, you know, reminds me of what you shared a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago or even a couple years ago um, in helping me recall what what God has done, what he has been speaking in my life and helping me kind of that reflection piece like we were talking about. It's, mm-hmm. it's helpful to have other trusted voices in that with you because we are so prone to to forget or to have a narrow mind or narrow focus about it. Yeah, I think um the receiving end there's a woman who's a few years older than me who has been kind of mentoring like spiritually mentoring me for the last eight years and yeah it's wild she's been able to point out to me things that I couldn't see on my own Mm -hmm. you know and I think that's the beauty of a friendship and community and discipleship you know that there are people now yeah sometimes we can't see everything for ourselves but the Lord wants to put people in our lives to be able to speak those things and are we willing to be vulnerable with them? Mm-hmm. Are we willing to like let go of any control or pride or self-reliance of like, I need to look like I have everything together for this person. And when you are able to kind of let those walls down and share openly about your life and what the Lord's been doing, it'll become easy for someone else to see those patterns and the way he's been working. Um, and I think with other people, when I'm, you know, with campers or missionaries, I'm looking to find the gold, you know, I'm uh, yeah. gold digging, you know, yeah. can I say that in Catholic radio? Yeah. <laughs> gold digging. Um, tell tell and, us what you mean. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> just did it. Yeah. Um, no, like the, I am, I'm, I'm digging, I'm finding the gold, the good in someone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I'm not willing to just take the, the coal or the dirt, the things that I see at the top and the surface, but I'm digging to find the gold and what the Lord is doing and the ways he's working in them. And then I'm going to call that out for them to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, And because they're worth it. Mm -hmm. They're worth And and when someone can recognize their own testimony, maybe if they don't see it uh, initially on their own, when they can see where the Lord has been and they can own it, I think that can change the trajectory of things for people. I think the word that's coming to mind is encouragement. Um, Right. Yeah. And in hearing someone's testimony or someone pointing out, your own testimony to you, reflecting back to you where you don't see it. There is really a a spirit of encouragement there that uplifts both people. Mm. And I guess I'm just reflecting on, well, maybe that's that's a huge key of testimony is we want to uplift the body of Christ and we need encouragement. We need hope. And when we when someone points it out that it's happening in us, we're encouraged like, okay, the Lord is working. He is good. Something is happening. But also when we hear others' testimony, it's, okay, Lord, do it in me. Mm-hmm. Like it, you, I've seen you do it in this person's life. They've clearly just shared that. Um, so Lord, I have the hope that you can do it in me too. And I think that's a beautiful prayer whenever you hear someone's testimony. If you feel like you're not there, just ask him, okay, show yourself just like you showed yourself to this individual i have a really uh beautiful story in my life of how um somebody found the gold in me and called it out in me even perhaps a little before i saw it and maybe before i was even like ready in my own place to see it but um i would so my wife is my second girlfriend my first girlfriend i dated for six years and that relationship ended to me rather abruptly and caught me off guard and I was in a difficult time processing it. So I went to my spiritual director at the time and uh, over the course of an hour, just kind of, you know, rambled and word vomited everything that just I was feeling in that moment. And at the end of that hour, I kind of looked at him and uh, Father Patrick Schultz up in the Diocese of Cleveland. And he looked at me and he said, Cam, this is going to be a really beautiful testimony of trust and docility in the Mm -hmm. end of it. And I was like, what do you mean? trust and docility i'm i'm feeling all these things and he was like yeah but isn't that the opportunity that we get to step into trust and docility uh and i met my wife six months later you know and uh i've seen the beauty of that since then of course but um yeah just that encouragement that i received in the moment even though i might not have even thought that i was ready for it i trusted father pat and his 
discernment in his walk with the Lord to look at me and say, actually, Cam, you are ready for this. So I'm going to speak it out and say, you, like, here is the trust and docility and, and you can step into it or you can just stick in your feelings and eat tubs of ice cream on the couch and, you know, do your thing that way. Right. Can we do both? Can we do both? <laughs> I think there's, I think, I think there's room for both when, okay, when you're going through those moments of like Paul, it, when he had his conversion, had that experience of blindness and mm -hmm. the Lord didn't just like take it away right away. There was a moment for him to just sit and be like, Oh, I'm blind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> The Lord was like, I'm going to change your life. Yeah. In a little bit. You yeah. Know? Um, so I think there is room to like it, it. The point of a testimony is not an escape from the woundedness. Um, it's seeing how the Lord is in it and gets you through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we talk a lot about... Um, spiritual friendship mm -hmm. you know, and having those people in our lives that can, that, you know, can sit with you like, uh, like father Sch Schultz did with you, Cam, mm -hmm. to not to get you out of where you are, but to just be there where you are with you, you know, and, and you know, to suffer with you, to offer whatever encouragement or whatever, just, just to be, uh, to be present and, um, you know, whether it takes six months or a year or, you know, several years to have people in your life that can, that can do that with you because then it becomes part of their testimony as well. Do we sometimes, um, over, I'm thinking of the word ministry, um, put too much of a um, role, you know, so I, I am involved in ministry as a youth minister, you know, that is my ministry. I am at Damascus, you know, helping recruit missionaries. So that's what I do. We do radio ministry do we overlook just the simple ways that we're all called with the spiritual gifts and with uh with our natural gifts to to minister to others i think we can <laughs> i think it can be yeah. a slippery slope because i think when you're um when your job is for the church it's beautiful it's it's really beautiful but i think it can become very quick that this now this i am this mm -hmm. like i am a missionary recruiter. I am, you know, like a camp director. And I've had, over the years, I've found moments where I have like caught myself in that. And I, the question I just go back to is, Lord, if it was just me and you, would that be enough? If Damascus shut down or I quit tomorrow, if I never got on stage and spoke again, if I never, helped run a summer camp again. If it was just me and you, would that be enough? And in moments where I feel like my answer is, ah, uh, maybe not. Then I'm like, all right, I need to do some reprioritizing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that, um, you know, yeah, in ministry, we're doing good work and our intention and our is good, mm -hmm. but it can, I think it, there is a temptation for it to become our, our everything in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there can be a temptation um, to maybe uh, all lay people too, where it's like, oh, well, ministry is something for people who, who work for the church. That's what they do. That's not my responsibility. And I, you know, by the fact of our baptism, you know, by being a mm -hmm. baptized Christian, we, we are called to the work of ministry, <laughs> you know, whether that's what we get a paycheck for or not. And I, I think we if we're on the lookout for opportunities, um, I think testimony is a great tool of ministry, um, whether in some kind of formal way or right. informal way. Um, and so, especially, you know, in our, our, our career with um, like 
relativism and stuff where people have, you know, their truth and their experience. Testimony is actually a really powerful tool for every Christian in the midst of that to be able to say, well, this has been my experience. This is what God has done in my life. Um, and really the culture is giving, handing us favors there where no one can refute, you know, your experience, what you've experienced. And so, um, yeah, there's, there's such an opportunity there for every every Christian to to step into ministry, whether it's in, you know, big ways or formal ways, or whether it's in small ways, talking with family, friends, people at the grocery store, um, anyone that we come in contact with, if we are asking Holy Spirit for opportunities to share testimony, uh, he's going to provide them. I was thinking last night, we, we distribute this, a number of us, uh, it, a lot of people do this, um, keep blankets and different, uh, we call them blessing bags uh, in our trunk. And we're coming into that season where a lot of people need, you know, some some sort of a bag of blessings, <laughs> you know, whether personal care items, some, some food, blankets, socks. Um, but I was at St. Matthew's last night and I just remembered there's a, a group of women that get together and they knit and they put together, you know, they make blankets and they make socks and what a beautiful ministry that is. And, and they pray over the people that will be receiving them, mm. not knowing who, who that person ultimately would be. So they're doing their part in ministry. They're using their gifts. They're coming together uh, in fellowship to, to do it together. And then they just hand it on. And then from my trunk, perhaps to um, a person in need, how that, how that blessing is passed on and how that uh, um, ministries connect. It, it, I, I was just struck by, um, with, with my testimony uh, of just wanting to be more aware of how um, and how through the grace of God I am um, being more aware of how kind and um, caring so many people are around us mm -hmm. and how their generosity has helped me through my life. And now, you know, to use the, you know, pay it forward now that I have that opportunity uh, to share material things, but then also God's love with others. Mm -hmm. That makes me think of um, the passage, you know, where there's the beggar and, is it, um, is it Paul or Peter that comes up to him and says, you know, money I do not have, mm -hmm. but what I, Peter, but what I do have, I give you. And yes, wherever we can help out someone's first and foremost needs for food and shelter and all those things, that's a huge blessing. But where we can't, do we then turn around and say, well, I'll give you what I do have and to stop and pray with that person and have a conversation with them and be that, that light in the darkness, right? The, the opportunity to share what the Lord has done in your life, what mm -hmm. the Lord has gifted you within your talents. Yeah. Okay, Carrie, I'm thinking of you with, uh, with the teenagers and Emily with uh, young adults. It comes back around to encouragement. Mm-hmm. How, when you see a, a particular gift in somebody, um, to encourage that gift and, 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 and to let them know that how important it is then for them to use that, mm -hmm. you know, for the good of somebody else. And, and that can happen in so many ways. I mean, it could be as a teacher, it could be, you know, a craft or, you know, writing or just kind words that there's those, those sorts of, um, um, moments of grace in our own lives are, are meant to be given to others. And that's a great thing for teenagers to see where if they feel undervalued or underappreciated or whatever for them to really, you know, lean into that. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, such a, a deep desire for, you know, people to be seen and known and loved and, and built up, you know, so much, especially, you know, high schoolers, I see all the time there, they go into school and they constantly sometimes can feel like they're just being beat down all day. And so, um, 
at youth group, you know, and hopefully in their families and in their, uh, you know, good faith filled friendships, we really do want to build a culture of encouragement, of honor, of calling out the good, the gold in each other, um, because they, they are starving for it for sure. And they, you know, that's why they turn to, to social media and all kinds of other things to try to get that, uh, affirmation um, that really first and foremost needs to come from the Lord, but can come um, from the Lord through um, brothers and sisters. I think we're owning gold digging now. When let's practical tips on, on, on testimonials. So how, how do you dig for the gold and, uh, in your life and how do you help others to to craft their testimonies you know both of you have experience in this so um the practicals is um right away i i think of this is the way i was how much time should be given in a testimony to pre-conversion i think that you know you want to touch on that but you don't want that to be the main thing people remember you want you want them to remember about what the Lord did in your life. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the pre part to give some context, but I'm not going to over glorify what happened. So, um, my, in my, what I do is I don't, you know, if there was poor choices that I made or things like that, I'm not giving like names of specifics or places, or I'm kind of generally saying, Hey, this is what happened. And then so like, yeah, how was I before? Where did God show up and how did I encounter him in that? And then how did that change things for me moving forward? So I think you want to spend, I don't know, I'm, I'm making up this ratio as I say this, like a quarter of the time at mm-hmm. the beginning and three quarters of the time should be about like God and the victory that came from it. Mm-hmm. Tara, do you agree? How do you yeah. teach your kids? No, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's different lengths of testimonies that right. you might give depending on your audience, how much time you have to talk to someone. When I'm uh, teaching kids at the Vine to give about like a three minute testimony, um, I'll always say, you know, no more than one minute on the before, the the pre-conversion and the rest of it should be about, you know, okay, how did you encounter Jesus? How did you come to know that God loves you and is real? And what has that looked like in your life since then? Um, And kind of some of those, you know, prompts. And then the last part that I always um, make sure to encourage my high schoolers with is to end um, with an invitation of sorts to whoever they're talking to, whether it's just, you know, conversationally a one-on-one um, or they are, you know, on the stage at youth group, giving their testimony to a whole crowd of people ending with an invitation to the people listening that um, like we've been talking about that, what God has done in my life, he can do in yours as well. Um, I think that is a, is a critical part too. And, and I always remind the kids to another practical of, uh, keeping Jesus as the center, you know, not, not their sin, not what they've been through. Um, and also not themselves. Like I, I see, uh, here's something we talk about the vine is that Jesus is the main character of your testimony, not, not you, not your sin. So keeping it focused on him. And then in, in a conversation with somebody else, not to make yourself the main character, mm-hmm. right. And you want to continue the conversation. I think that's a, where, kind of that pre-conversion can help um, make a connection to the person that you're talking about. So, you know, I've, I've been something through something similar as you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is very, very quickly my experience. I understand what you're going through. Well, let me tell you about how God has worked in my life so that I can give you the reason for your hope. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think, I think too, you know, you don't need to try and force opportunities of when to share your testimony. You know, so if, if you're listening to this, you're like, all right, I got a good one. Like (laughs) the Lord did this. I'm ready. (laughs) Awesome. I, I would say then ask the Lord, Lord, give me, can you give me and provide me opportunities to share this open doors that are supposed to be opened and close them where they're supposed to be closed. And then us just being really docile in a moment to be, okay, Lord, I think this is the moment or, I mean, I've had opportunities before where I'm walking with a younger woman and I like really, I'm like, wow, I think I really need to share this with them. And the Lord is like, no, not yet. And I'm like, are you sure? (laughs) Are you sure? (laughs) He's like, not yet. And I'm like, okay. And you know, maybe a few weeks later, he's like, all right, go for it. 
And um, so just being really docile in, in when and who you're supposed to share with as well. I think that aspect is really important because you never know exactly. It, I'm sure they're sharing with you, um, but also the Lord knows the perfect timing, definitely. And you never know how that's going to hit them. And so that's a beautiful point in terms of giving our testimony. Of, okay, Lord, tell me if you're having a one-on-one, tell me when is the right time and, and having him lead you and guide mm-hmm. you in that as well. Do you encourage, um, your youth, uh, Kara to write down their testimonies? Um, I do is, I mean, if they're gonna be giving one at youth group, uh, particularly, I think it's good to help them that win that reflecting process, like we said, but I would say, you know, for anyone who's maybe never sat down and reflected on, you know, okay, in either the big picture or in a specific mm-hmm. instance, what has God done in my life? Um, I have found it really beneficial to sit down and, you know, just bullet point, kind of make a timeline of, you know, okay, this used to be this way. Now it's this way. What were kind of the things, the main things in the middle that got me to where I am now? Um, I think it's helpful. to. to well, it, it's good point. to look back on then too, you know, years mm-hmm. later or six months later, however long mm-hmm. to look back to, you know, where you were. Yeah, and, We do that with our campers at, at, at Catholic youth summer camp as well, because on Fridays when before the kids leave, they have the opportunity to get on stage and share their testimony with their, with their parents and with other campers that are there. And um, sometimes when you're put on the spot and you haven't prepped, you either go on for a really long time or you maybe don't hit the point you're really trying to hit. I was born. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're like, okay. Um, so we really, something that we've started incorporating into camp more intentionally is we do a teaching with the kids on how to share their testimony. So we're like, hey, what happened here this week was beautiful and amazing. How are you going to share about this when you go home? And helping them to put words. I think especially with youth and with adults too, but I think especially with youth, they experience something. And we don't want them to go home and be like, and I just cried all the lot. We're like, no, no, no. Okay, what was the Lord doing through those tears? Like, mm-hmm. what did those tears mean? And um, getting when you write something down, it just, it helps so much. Mm-hmm. It puts words to it. It's concrete. And, and like you said, David, it's something that you can go back to as well. Mm-hmm. Final words, Amanda? I'm just really edified by today's conversation and being reminded of, you know, just what we started off with. Always be prepared to make defense um, for the hope that is in you. And in that, maybe taking the word testimony and not looking at it like this big, scary thing, but to just take time to reflect, okay, Lord, what's one thing I can be grateful for today or one, one way that you've been working in my life lately and then show me the ways that I can share your goodness with others. Show me the doors to to do that and to be patient in that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Emily Knuth from Damascus, Cara Day from St. Brendan's. Thanks for being in the cafe. Thank you. Thanks for having us. God bless you guys. Coming up tonight, 7 o'clock at the Cathedral, Bishop Fernandez will be delivering a talk, uh, The Kingdom of God Prevails exorcism and healing in the church again this evening seven to nine o'clock at saint joseph cathedral sponsored by the museum of catholic art and history we will also be airing it live here on saint gabriel radio amanda glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be a world without end amen Amen. Coming up tomorrow, Chrissy and Stephen Chalky will be with us. Look forward to it. God love you all. See you tomorrow.